Shin Megami Tensei 5 is the biggest JRPG release of this year and is the first installment of the Shin Megami Tensei series if you're a Persona fan. Jokes aside, this game is the fifth installment in the mainline series of the franchise, and with the massive amount of new fans to Alice's Golden Child, I figured who better to show you the ropes than the guy who recently got himself acquainted with the series over the past year. So let's break down Shin Megami Tensei 5. Spoiler free, dummy approved. Shin Megami Tensei 5 introduces a new ragtag team of high school teenagers. Wait, what? It's only the weird looking one? But how am I supposed to date? Okay, fine. Shin Megami Tensei 5 introduces a young high school boy who, after going through an unexplainable supernatural event, ends up in a post-apocalyptic version of Tokyo, now known as Dot, that's full of demons and angels, and even a few humans. Needing protection from those demons, this high school boy receives help from someone named Aogami and transforms into Nahobino, an entity that's neither human nor demon, and something that's capable of absolutely slapping the goofy out of a demon. I'm gonna smack the goofy out you. Using the power of the Nahobino, you must figure out what's happened to the world you once knew, decide the fate of this new world run by demons, and figure out how Ryuji ended up in this game. Traversing the new overworld of Dot is similar to Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne. Thank you, Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne. But with several major improvements, thanks to the game running on the Unreal Engine 4 for the first time in the series. Nice. Nahobino is capable of dynamic movements, like jumping, slashing, and running like that weeb in Anime Club. And it's a good thing, too, because the overworld is massive, connecting completely together on the map, meaning that you better get used to those arms flailing around behind you, because that's going to be your primary method of travel. Also new to SMT5 is how you interact with demons in the overworld. Instead of random encounters, enemies are now visible, Enemy spotted. both on the minimap and in the actual overworld. You can begin battles in different ways, and depending on how you do it, will determine how the battle starts. Sneaking up on an unsuspecting demon, that'll start the fight in your favor. Going in head on, it's up to chance how the fight will start. Get bonked over the head because you weren't paying attention? <laughs> well, now the enemy has a head start. Good luck. And speaking of battles, let's speak on the combat. More specifically, the press turn system, Magatsuhi, and the new affinity system. The press turn system is your typical turn-based JRPG battle sequence with a few tweaks. See that glowing blue thing at the top right? Those are your turns, which are determined by the amount of members in your party. If you attack an enemy's weakness during one of those turns, or if you land a critical hit, you will gain an extra turn. However, if you attack an enemy that happens to block it due to their strong affinity, you will lose a turn. So, make sure to use your intuition and be smart about your attacks, otherwise it'll look like a Dikembe Mutombo block party. Magatsuhi is what I think of as sort of a special or rage meter. Once it fills up, you can unleash devastating skills to mollywop your opponent. This fills up gradually in each battle. Affinities also work in an entirely new way this year. Affinities, or in other words, the kinds of attacks and skills you use, are shown by a numerical value in the menus. While Nahobino has a blank slate and can strengthen his affinities over time, which we'll talk about that in a second, demons have natural affinity values. The higher a demon's numerical affinity, the stronger that kind of attack will hit and the more resistant that they will be to that kind of attack. The lower the numerical affinity, the weaker the attack will be. So for instance, if this mermaid has a plus three affinity to ice, not only will her ice attacks hit harder than usual, but she will block ice attacks entirely. You can learn demon affinities through trial and error or by recruiting that specific demon to your team. Demon recruitment is a staple of the Shin Megami Tensei series and in a land full of them, you're gonna need a few on your side to survive. So, just like me talking to my ex, you're gonna need to seduce some demons. Recruiting demons is actually very simple. While in battle, simply select the talk option from your battle menu. If the demon is the same level as you or lower, a speech prompt style game begins. If you choose the right answers, the demon will most likely join you. This isn't guaranteed, however, because like my ex, sometimes demons can be dickheads for no reason. So keep on your toes and be persistent. The Leyline Fountain is also a brand new addition to the game, serving as the central hub for Nahobino. This magic blue cylinder of light allows the player to save their game, quick travel, meet the coolest character in the game, Gustav, recover health and MP, and speak to Sophia. Gustav is the shop owner, allowing you to buy things with demonic currency, Maka, and is fond of human trinkets, which you'll find in the overworld. He also has these cute little buddies named Memons, which he will reward you for finding them out in the overworld. Sophia is a familiar face for SMT fans and serves as a very important resource for you, as she helps you fuse demons, buy miracles, and apply essences. Fusing demons is similar to how it's been done in every recent SMT game. By selecting two demons in your inventory, you can fuse them together to form a new, more powerful demon. As long as that demon is 
your level or lower, you can summon them, and with a sick cutscene too. Miracles are another new feature, which serve as a perk or passive skill system, which allows Nahobino to get absolutely juiced over the course of the game. These miracles are purchased using glory, a unique currency that's given for finding memons or by finding glory holes in the overworld. Essence is also new to SMT5, but serves as a skill inheritor that we've seen in previous installments. An essence can be acquired in a myriad of ways, through purchase, through demons in your party, and even found in the overworld. But in short, essence allows you to teach any party member the skill of a particular demon. And there you go, you're all set. Shin Megami Tensei 5 is an awesome ga- wait, what the hell is that? Abscesses are a unique feature of SMT5, serving as blocked routes that hold many boss fights. Beat these abscesses across the map and you'll gain new miracles, earn big XP, and expand your vision of the map. And there you have it. There's the major things you need to know about Shin Megami Tensei 5 and how to get started. But before you go decide the fate of the universe, here's some small tips to help you out just a little bit more. Demons cannot be recruited on a new moon. There are side quests all over the world of Dot. They offer great XP and are worth getting done if you have some free time. Grinding is still a serious time commitment in SMT5. Lowering the difficulty to easy mode during times where you need to juice your party will cut that time down exponentially. Make use of the auto battle and cinematic skips. Battles happen often, so save yourself some time. Physical attacks no longer require health to use like in other SMT games. So while it's safe to use them, make sure you're aware of your MP since every single move uses MP now. And lastly, save your game often. Shin Megami Tensei is now available worldwide, so go pick it up today or check out the digital deluxe and standard editions in the Nintendo eShop. A big thanks again to Sega and Atlas for allowing me to work on a project like this early. This is a dream come true to work on and I can't be grateful enough. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. And I also can't be grateful enough for the support of our patrons over at patreon.com slash yourbuttevin. Support like this lets us continue to make these big projects, and I can't say thank you enough for it. And for just a few dollars each month, you can take a behind the scenes look at our anime drinking game series, as well as a podcast between Misinformed Repose and I, and even get the inside scoop on what videos we're planning next. So thank you Tom Lyle, Beef Limb, Bryce, Gary T3, Jake, King Grey, Kyoto, Mr. Tyndall, Nebulous, Puppy Bell, and Cy Baker for being $10 patrons, and thank you to the rest of our patrons as well.